The independent wrestling scene of 2012 was absolutely loaded with quality promotions, all with unique identities and fan bases, from the unreal work rate of PWG and Evolve, to the ultra-violence of Combat Zone Wrestling, to the over-the-top comic book world of Chikara. All these promotions and more found their niche and along with it some degree of success. One promotion that failed to do any of this, however, was Extreme Rising. Extreme Rising launched in January of 2012 as Extreme Reunion. Promoter Shane Douglas, along with partners Steve O'Neill and Kevin Kleinrock, were looking to capitalize on the success of Hardcore Homecoming from seven years earlier. The decision to try to create a successor to ECW, a brand that had died twice by the time Extreme Reunion was announced, did seem odd, but with the team in place, you had to think it had a chance. While I'm no fan of Shane Douglas, he had worked every major promotion there was in the late 80s through the 2000s, He had to have picked up some good ideas along the way. Steve O'Neill had been around wrestling, and Kevin Kleinrock had joined XPW on the ground floor and had success outside of wrestling with Bischoff Hervey Productions. Maybe they could make a go of it. But we probably should have known from almost the beginning that things might not go well, when, in an attempt at guerrilla marketing, Shane went to a taping of Monday Night Raw under a mask. He unmasked at the hard cam with a sign promoting Extreme Reunion. The camera cut away immediately, and Shane was escorted out. It was a bit sad. Even though the advertising failed, maybe the show will be worthwhile. Stacking the roster with ECW alumni, the group presented their debut event, the self-titled Extreme Reunion, on April 28, 2012. In the show was... bad. It was very bad. It didn't necessarily start that way, though. Fan accounts of the pre-show meet-and-greet showed that there was excitement for the promotion. Fans packed in lines at the Philly National Guard Armory, including a very long line for Shane Douglas. The combination of an aging roster putting on lackluster to outright bad matches, long lulls in between those matches, and out-of-date booking had the crowd in a real bad mood come main event time. Douglas, who expected to be met with a hero's welcome for his main event match, was instead showered with refund and fuck you Shane chants. Some fans even left before the match began. The ones who stayed continued showing their displeasure with more chants like, Just retire. We want Bischoff. And the worst of all, we want Russo. This perceived disrespect really set off Shane as he cut his now infamous, You don't work me, I work you promo. I work you, not the other fucking way around. And did I mention the advertised main event was supposed to be Shane Douglas vs. Sabu, but Sabu was unable to perform due to an overdose right before the show? Instead, Douglas took on Too Cold Scorpio. Scorpio was amazing, but not who this crowd wanted to see in this match. Two more shows were announced for June, and to his credit, Douglas addressed the criticism from the debut show and announced they'd take the promotion in a new direction. Instead of just ECW originals trying to relive the glory days, they'd mix in younger talent to the roster, a way to pass the torch to the next generation of Extreme. They'd also rename the company to Extreme Rising to reflect this change in philosophy. June's events featured many of the same talents from the debut event, while also featuring fresh faces like Homicide, Luke Cox, Papadon, and Matt Hardy. Extreme Rising would also bring in luchadors, like Bestia666. However, this weekend would also have its own controversy. As mentioned previously, Sabu was rushed to the hospital hours before bell time after a drug overdose. Well, cameras were rolling, and Extreme Rising used that footage to hype up Sabu's return to the ring leading up to the event. This would be Sabu's first match since the incident because he had just completed a stay in rehab. Many fans saw right through the gross promotional tactic, 
a desperate attempt to increase ticket sales a week before the show. Well, it didn't really work as attendance hovered around the 200 mark for each show that weekend. Somehow after this stunt, Extreme Rising not only carried on, but tried to expand their visibility. They partnered with wrestling internet pay-per-view service WWN Live to start airing live pay-per-views beginning in November of 2012. The first event, Remember November, huh, clever, would see the start of a tournament to crown their first champion. They would also add even more new faces, like Facade, Jay Bradley, and Christian York. This would also end up being the only event presented via WWN Live, likely due to low fan interest. Their next pay-per-view offering would be taped and presented via High Spots in December, and featured the semifinals and finals of the World Championship Tournament, won by Stevie Richards. And to their credit, Stevie's win was seen as the right move, since he was really the only talent they had gotten over. And this is where things started to get real bad for Extreme Rising. In early 2013, they announced three events to take place in April during WrestleMania weekend in Philadelphia and Staten Island, not far from all the action in New York and New Jersey. They had even booked Jushin Thunder Liger for a show, and had announced that the other two shows of the weekend would allow fans to book the matches and stipulations. But a week before the events were to take place, they were canceled. Rumors insisted it was again due to low advanced ticket sales. Shortly after the cancellation, during a Twitter exchange with friend Danny Doring, Stevie Richards jokingly offered to defend the Extreme Rising Championship in a game of Madden. Doring then responded that he could put his ECW Tag Team Championship on the line in a battle of defunct promotions. Well, this didn't sit well with the Extreme Rising management, who immediately demanded that Richards return the belt for allowing them to be referred to as defunct. It's important to note that Stevie, through all of this, had been defending the championship on almost every independent show he appeared on. He tried to raise the profile of the company when they weren't able to. So the joke was just that. I'll defend the belt anywhere, anyhow, even in a video game. It's as innocent as a joke from a wrestler can be. Management wasn't happy, and Stevie kept the belt, and things died down. Then shows continued to be canceled throughout 2013. Stevie continued to defend the championship, and again, management was not pleased that it was being defended on shows that weren't theirs. Shows that, again, they were not running. Finally, in December of 2013, Extreme Rising actually held their sixth show, Unfinished Business. Again, the event was held in the former ECW arena and available via high spots. And once again, the show was the middle road quality-wise and disappointing attendance-wise. At the start of 2014, the promotion announced a whole slate of events scheduled for all around New York and Pennsylvania. In February, Shane Douglas would leave Extreme Rising prior to an event in his native Pittsburgh. The event was, shockingly enough, cancelled, and Shane stated he was never involved with the event in the first place. After Shane's exit, Steve O'Neill took over full control of the promotion and announced they were working on a television deal that would see them air locally in the Philadelphia market. In March, Stevie Richards lost the Extreme Rising Championship to Luke Hawks on an ECWA event. The following month in April 2014, the company deleted their Twitter and Facebook accounts. They also announced that all upcoming events were canceled and to seek refunds from the point of sale or your bank. It doesn't appear any fans received refunds, and wrestlers were only informed of the cancellation days before the events were to take place. O'Neill and Extreme Rising went radio silent for months and by the summer they appeared to be a dead entity that fans would sometimes reference as a punchline. Then, in July, Matt Hardy was scheduled to take on Luke Hawks on a Maryland Championship Wrestling show, and what was promoted by the wrestlers as MCW Heavyweight Championship versus Extreme Rising Championship. And Extreme Rising went nuts. O'Neill sent out a press release stating that the stipulation was off, as Luke Hawks was not recognized as champion, since he never defeated Stevie Richards on a sanctioned Extreme Rising event. Again, very important point here, they weren't running shows. In fact, they canceled seven out of their last eight announced shows. That's more canceled shows than shows they actually put on. When MCW promoter Dan McDevitt was reached for comment on the situation, he said that not O'Neill nor anyone affiliated with Extreme Rising had reached out about the stipulation. He also didn't care what the wrestlers brought to put on the line. Nothing was done intentionally or maliciously. When Stevie Richards was reached for comment, he simply said, I like cats. And that was the last noise that Extreme Rising ever made, and they faded away into obscurity. Extreme Rising really was a case study in how to not run a wrestling company. They got almost nothing right, 
had more controversies in two years than most promotions do in a decade. According to Douglas, the promotion fell apart because of what he refers to as mission creep. Partners stepping on each other's toes and meddling in the responsibilities of other partners. No communication, no direct division of responsibility. Clear proof that a successful wrestling company needs to be overseen by the vision of one person, not via a think tank or committee. In the years since, no more ECW reunion shows have happened. Shane Douglas continues to appear all around the wrestling scene, mostly at conventions. Steve O'Neill would find his way as a pay-per-view producer for Stonecutter Media, assembling wrestling compilation pay-per-views. Kevin Kleinrock continues to work with Mass Republic, and as of 2016, he has been Director of Digital Operations and Partner Development for Viz Media. And Stevie Richards? Well, he's been recognized as Extreme Rising Champion for over 3,400 days as of this video. Move over, Bruno Sammartino. I'm Scott from WrestleSpective. Thanks for watching.